Amen. Good evening, everybody. It's good to see you on this Sunday evening. Let's grab our songbooks and let's take a guess of what we're going to sing tonight for our first song. There shall be showers of blessings. Let's go to number 224 as we stand, please. Number 224. Stand and stretch. We'll sing the first, second, and the fourth verse. Number 224. There shall be showers of blessings. There shall be showers of blessing. This is a promise of love. There shall be seasons refreshing. Sent from the Savior above. Showers of blessing. Showers of blessing we need. Mercy drops round us are falling. But for the showers we plead. There shall be showers of blessing, precious reviving again. Over the hills and the valleys, sound of abundance of rain. Showers of blessing, showers of blessing we need. Mercy drops round us are falling, but for the showers we plead. There shall be showers of blessing, oh, that today they might fall. Now as to God we're confessing, now as on Jesus we call. Showers of blessing, showers of blessing we need. Mercy drops round us are falling, but for the showers we plead could happen at a better time amen 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 praise the lord well it's good to see everybody this evening hopefully that you had a great afternoon and enjoyed your time are you happy you're saved amen amen everybody's smiling okay still got that cold gate smile going amen let's uh, open up with a word of prayer with the mood do you mind opening us up in prayer please Amen. You may be seated. Turn again to number 217. Number 217 will sing the first, third, and the fourth verse of He Included Me. Aren't you glad He included you? Amen. Number 217. I am so happy in Christ today that I go singing along my way. Yes, I'm so happy to know and say Jesus included me too. Jesus included me. Yes, he included me. When the Lord said, Whosoever, he included me. Jesus included me. Yes, he included me. When the Lord said, Whosoever, he included me. Ever God's Spirit is saying, Come, hear the bright saying, No longer roam. But I am sure while they're calling home, Jesus included me too. Jesus included me. Yes, He included me. When the Lord said, Whosoever, He included me. Jesus Jesus included me, yes, he included me, when the Lord said, whosoever, he included me. Freely come drink, words the soul to thrill, oh, with what joy they my heart do fill. For when he said, whosoever will, Jesus included me too. Jesus included me, yes, he included me, when the Lord said, whosoever, he included me. Jesus included me, yes, he included me, when the Lord said, whosoever, he included me. Aren't you glad the Lord included you too? I'm so glad his salvation is for all. Amen. Amen. Well, it's good to see everybody this evening. Brother Luis, Miss Tanya, it's good to see you on a Sunday evening. Praise the Lord for that. 
Thank you so much. Thank you so much for visiting us this evening. Hopefully that you feel right at home. Does anybody have a blessing that they would like to share? Something the Lord has done for you this week and just you just want to praise the Lord for. Anybody? Praise the Lord for the rain. Amen. Amen. We've been praying for that. I know the farmers have been needing that. Amen. Anybody have a blessing? Don't scratch your head. You might get called on. Surely somebody's got a blessing. Yes, Miss Tompkins. Yay. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord for that. Praise the Lord. That's good. How's, uh, how's the little one doing? Good. Good. That's good. It's good to hear. Amen. Anybody else have a blessing that they'd like to share? Yes, ma'am. Mrs. Zenas. Yay. Yay. Praise the Lord. Murphy in Florida was able to get home from the hospital. Praise the Lord. So far, she's doing just fine. Amen. Well, pray for our, our little ones over there. Uh, that's why they're not here. They're going through uh, a little something. So just pray for them. They're sharing. Amen. Say what? Oh, that's cute. I love, I love how they view life and just the innocence. Praise the Lord. Amen. Anybody else? Have a blessing that you'd like to share? Amen. If not, then let's go to number 143. Number 143, Blessed Assurance. Blessed Assurance. We'll sing all three verses. Let's stand as we sing this song in preparation for our scripture reading to follow. Number 143, Blessed Assurance. Think of the words. Blessed Assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God. Born of his spirit, washed in his blood. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, perfect delight, visions of rapture now burst on my sight. Angels descending, ring from above. Echoes of mercy, whispers of love. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, all is at rest. I and my Savior am happy and blessed. Watching and waiting, looking above. Filled with His goodness, lost in His love. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Did you catch the last verse where it says, Perfect submission, all is at, all is at rest. I and my Savior am happy and blessed. Watching and waiting, looking above, filled with his goodness, lost in his love. God has so much love for us. We can get lost in it. Amen. Isn't that a great thing to get lost in? Amen. Praise the Lord for that. Let's grab our Bibles at this time. We're going to go to Psalms chapter 92. Psalms chapter 92 for our scripture reading. Psalms chapter 92. We'll read the entire chapter together, the entire psalm together. I'll read the first verse. Join me with me on the second verse. We'll alternate all the way through verse 15. Psalms 92. 
verse 1. It says, It is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord and to sing praises unto thy name, O Most High, to show forth thy loving kindness in the morning and thy faithfulness every night upon an instrument of ten strings and upon the psaltery, upon the harp with a solemn sound. For thou, Lord, hast made me glad through thy work. I will triumph in the works of thy hands. O Lord, how great are thy works, and thy thoughts are very deep. A brutish man knoweth not, neither doth a fool understand this. When the wicked spring as the grass, and when all the workers of iniquity do flourish, it is that they shall be destroyed forever. But thou, Lord, art most high forevermore. For lo, thine enemies, O Lord, for lo, thine enemies shall perish. All the workers of iniquity shall be scattered. But my horn shalt thou exalt like the horn of an unicorn. I shall be anointed with fresh oil. Mine eye also shall see my desire on mine enemies. And mine eye shall hear my desire of the wicked that rise up against me. The righteous shall flourish like the palm tree. He shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. Those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. They shall still bring forth fruit in old age. They shall be fat and flourishing to show that the Lord is upright. He is my rock and there is no uprightness, unrighteousness in him. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we praise and thank you, Lord, for the reading of your word. Thank you so much, Lord, that you've given us your word to enjoy. I pray, Lord, that you please. You would still our hearts. Lord, I pray if there's anything that's weighing on our hearts, that you would help us to set it aside and put it in your hands just for a few minutes so that we can hear what the Spirit wants to say to the church. More than anything, we want you to meet with us. We want you to, to speak to our hearts. We want you to teach us something from your word, Lord. We need your help. We're about to go into another week into the world and be living amongst the people of the world. And, Lord, we need direction. We need food. We need strength to be able to make it. I pray that you'd please... Holy Spirit, please come down and speak to our hearts. Fill us with your Holy Spirit. Give us spirit-filled ears so that we hear with our spirits, we hear with our, with our hearts, Lord, what the Spirit wants to say to the church, what the Father would like for us to hear this evening and, and address and uh, implement this week. Please meet with us. I pray you please bless our time together. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. I could tell you I'm nothing And I would be telling the truth I could say I am worthless A hopeless sinner That's true Oh, but that's just part of my story I haven't told everything For I was lost Reborn and raised a child of the King And I'm a royal descendant of a King from Jerusalem For I am part of the bloodline of David And that's who I am And I claim kindred to Isaac, to Jacob, and Abraham. For I'm a royal descendant of a king from Jerusalem. Well, how in this world could I stand and say such a thing? To say that I'm royal and then claim that my father's a king I'll have to take you back to that altar where it happened many years ago and that's where I met my king I was washed in his blood and that's all that I know and I'm a royal descendant of a king from Jerusalem For I am part of the bloodline Of David That's who I am 
And I claim kindred to Jacob, to Isaac, and Abraham. For I'm a royal descendant of a king from Jerusalem. Royal descendant, amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. amen. Let's go in our Bibles to Psalms chapter 92. Amen. Just put it behind the banister on the floor. Amen. Psalms chapter 92. What a chapter full of great truths. What a chapter full of great truths. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, please bless our time together. I pray that you please watch over us, protect us. Please teach us something, Lord, from your word. Help us, Lord, to hear what the Spirit wants to say to the church. Thank you so much, Lord, for Making us, making us a part of your lineage through Jesus Christ, your bloodline. We praise and thank you, Lord, that you would love us that much to want to rescue us from the pit of hell and save us, save our souls forever and ever. Thank you so much. I pray you please teach us something from your word this evening. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Experts estimate that if a normal cassette tape is played about 100 times a year, Sound quality will deteriorate somewhat after about 10 years, but the tape itself will play on. I'm going to go through a little few stats on lifespans. A lightning bolt lasts about 45 to 55 microseconds. You know, Job says that the Lord, he made a way for the lightning of the thunder. Before time began, he drew out each stroke of lightning and where they would strike. The detail for a 45 to 55 microsecond instant of time. The average running shoe worn by the average runner on an average surface will last about 350 to 500 miles. How's it going for you? Amen. <laughs> A hard pencil can write up to 30,000 words or draw a line more than 30 miles long. It's interesting. Most ballpoint pens will draw, ballpoint pens will draw a line 4,000 to 7,500 feet long. Leather combat boots have a wartime lifespan of six months, a peacetime lifespan of eight months. The army walks during war and peace, but that's the lifespan of their boots. The projected lifespan of a baby born in the U.S. today is about 71 years. That's nearly double what it was at the end of the 18th century. The longest authenticated lifespan of a human being is 113 years and 214 days. Amen. Amen. Anybody, anybody out here have plans beating that record? Amen. As long as it's in good health. Amen. Studies have sh ha showed that married people live longer than those who remain single. Interesting. So kids get married. Amen. Uh, a group of subatomic particles known as unstable hadrons, however you sound that out, exists for only one one hundred sextillionth of a second. That's 10 to the negative 23 second. For the Tompkins, can you write that one out? No. <laughs> That's less time than it takes light to travel a single inch. We're going to have a quiz after church tonight, okay? So uh, please be taking good notes on these lifespans. A 100-watt in, incandescent light bulb will last about 750 hours. A 25-watt watt light bulb, 2,500 hours. The number of times a light bulb is turned on and off has little to do with its lifespan. A $1 bill lasts approximately 18 months in circulation. Here's an interesting one. Practice footballs used by professionals last two to three days, a playing life of perhaps five hours. Amazing. And they spend all those billions of dollars. Amazing. Home teams are required to provide 24 new balls each game, and these last only about six minutes of playing time. Wow. Most people think about their lifespan, some not so much, some too much. 
But to a convicted criminal in solitary confinement, a long lifespan is said by some to be the ultimate torture and punishment. A long life without any human interaction. When you see a new baby born, your mind many times begins to think about his life and what it will account to. The same should go for a newborn baby in the faith. You know, the goal of a babe in Christ, as is for the baby, should not be how long will I live, but it should be what will my life count for? What will my life count for? This psalm, Psalms 92, we can look at it as a, as a guide to our Christian life and how we can have a better quality of life or the best quality of Christian life that we could ever hope for. It can look, we can look at it as a guide to serve as a reminder of certain things to follow and serve as a measurement of achievement. What can we learn from this chapter? that will give us a better quality of life as we walk our pilgrim pathway. Let's look at Psalms 92. You know, if you're, new, if you're a new Christian or if you're new in the beginning of a meaningful walk with the Lord, this chapter will give you some great steps to follow. If you're a veteran believer, it'll give you some great things to remember. Let's look at Psalms 92. Verse 1, it says, It is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord. You know, a great step in having a great quality of Christian life is learning to give thanks. Learning to give thanks. Doesn't it say in 1 Thessalonians 5.18, and everything give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you? God says in everything. Learn to give thanks in everything. Even when, when, when you have a storm come through or when you have a, a, a fault or, or you have some problem or, or situation that is not very pleasant, God's doing that for a reason. It is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord. 2 Timothy 3 says, This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, Disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy. Has God blessed us so much here in this land of opportunity that it's now expected? These blessings are just expected. You know, uh, if, you were, if you were to uh, be able to time travel back to the 1800s or the 1700s or the 1600s and then take, the, take uh, uh, somebody that you met there and say, hey, let's travel to the future to where I'm from, they would be amazed. They would be jaw-dropped at the things that we have going on in our life here. Oh, my goodness, all these conveniences. Boy, I wish I... we've got it easy. And if we're going to have a good quality of Christian life, it's, it would be good to step back and say, you know what? I have a lot to be thankful for. I have a lot to be thankful for. Learn to give thanks always for all things. It's a hard discipline to learn, but it will give you a better quality of Christian life. Think about if you live a long lifespan without unthankfulness, always griping about everything. Man, what, what, a, what a sad way to live. Amen? To, to be going around critiquing and, and, and judging everything. It's like, is there nothing good in, in, in your life? Learn to give thanks. We're living in a sin-filled world. Plenty will go wrong. You know, I've said it many times, critics are cheap. They're a dime a dozen. But somebody who can see the good, who can, who can look a little further than the surface, look a little deeper than the surface and see the good, Oh, that's a, that's a, you're, you're looking at a good-hearted person right there. In this sinful world, we're going to have plenty go wrong. But that's why God said that if you want to have a wonderful quality of Christian life, it is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord. It is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord. But not only that, look in verse 1 again. It says, and to sing praises unto thy name, O Most High. Do you wake up with a song on your heart? You ought to be asking the Lord, Lord, when I wake up in the morning, would you just have a song on my heart? It's, 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 it's amazing waking up in the morning, and it's always a different song. And it may be a song from three days ago, or maybe the song from the night before, or, or something like that. But, but to, to sing praises unto the name, unto our, uh, the name of Jesus Christ, we ought to sing songs that praise God's name, songs that praise Jesus. 
the music that you sing will be one of the greatest determining factors as to how many life cycles you travel and your quality of Christian life. The music that you sing, is it filled with joy? Does it, does it uh, uh, lift up Jesus Christ? You see, that old music of the old life, it'll appeal to the flesh, and it may gin up some emotions and some, and, and, and some feelings, but it won't minister to the soul. The new music of Jesus Christ, it will appeal to the Holy Spirit, and it will feed your spirit, and it will stir the embers in your heart. Psalms 40, verse 2 says, He brought me up also out of an horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and set my feet upon a rock, and established my goings. Has Jesus done that for you? Has Jesus reached down, and has he brought you out of that pit of sin? And has he saved you? And has he, has he set you upon a rock? But not only that, verse 3 says, And he hath put a new song in my mouth. What's the new song that God has put in your mouth? Is the world, is the world hearing that new song? God says, he put a new song in my mouth, even praise unto our God. Many shall see it and fear and shall trust in the Lord. That new song that you sing, that new praise that you sing to your God, people are going to see that and hear it, and they're going to be moved by it because... Think, think about John Newton. If we were to have John Newton up here and if he were to sing the song Amazing Grace and tell his story, imagine the power. Every word in that song has very meaning, very much meaning. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. There's so much to be said about that one word in John Newton's testimony. Well, that was the song God gave John Newton, but what about you? What about me? He put a new song in our mouth, even praising to our God. God said a new song. It's not an old song. It's not from the old lifestyle. It's a new song. Learn to give thanks and everything. Number two, sing songs that praise God's name. Go to verse two. It says, to show forth love thy loving kindness in the morning and thy faithfulness every night. Get into the habit of doing this. Get in the habit of looking for God's loving kindness every morning. Do you ever wake up and, and, and some things have gone wrong and you say, oh boy, it's going to be a bad day. Yeah, it's going to be a bad day because that's the, that's the setting. That's the, that's the target setting that you just set. It's going to be a bad day. So your focus is going to focus on that. See, all, I've got all this evidence. It was a bad day. How about, how about I say, you know what? I'm going to look for God's loving kindness in the morning. And I'm going to set my eyes and my heart and my spirit to, to notice the loving kindness of the Lord. And at the end of the day, here's another thing that you could get in the habit of doing. Reflect on God's faithfulness every night. Sit down and ask yourself, okay, how, was God, how did God show his loving kindness to me today? And you're, you start counting the ways and start noticing the ways. You talk about rejoicing your heart. You start talking about having a shout and hallelujah praise time there before you go to bed. And then you're ready to wake up in the next, the, the next day and, hey, I want to look for some more. We ought to look for God's loving kindness in the morning and reflect on God's faithfulness every night. We ought to meditate on our day. We ought to see in it God's word. See, see it in God's word as you read it. See God as, as we read his word. What is Proverbs 3, 6? It says, in all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. Are we even thinking about him as we're going about our day, as we're uh, traveling, as we're uh, meeting new people, as we're going about our daily business? Are we even acknowledging him? The Bible says, in all thy ways, in all thy ways, acknowledge him. You want to have a better quality of Christian life? Learn to give thanks. Sing songs that praise God's name. Learn to look for God's loving kindness and reflect on his faithfulness. Go to verse 3. It says, Upon an instrument of ten strings, and upon the psaltery, and upon the harp, with a solemn sound. Know what you, do you, know, you know what would help you have a good quality of Christian life? Listen to calm, God-uplifting music. This world has got plenty. You, you, just go to the, you just go to Meyer or you just go to the store or Walmart or, or, or someplace in business. And, and what do they have? They have that music that just beats at your spirit. 
As a Christian, as a child of God, we ought to, we ought to in our private time or, or in our car or in our home, be lifting, listening to something that will calm our spirit and help us to hear the Spirit of God. He says, upon an instrument of ten strings. Have you ever listened to, to, to uh, a guitar classical music or, or somebody doing hymns on guitar or with a harp and how soothing it is? God, wants, God doesn't want to have us on edge. He wants us to feel calm. He wants us to, to enjoy walking with Him and talking with Him and being at peace. Music that appeals to the flesh will feed the flesh and carnal desires, but music that appeals to the Spirit will feed your spirit and spiritual desires and spiritual aspirations. We ought to listen to music that, that will stir our spirits to be a bold witness for Jesus Christ. We ought to listen to music that will, that will stir our spirits and, and, and cause us to aspire to, to stand firm in the faith. Music that would encourage us to get back into the Word of God and to dig in the Word of God. Galatians 6 eight says, For he that soweth to the flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption, but he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. That which we sow, the seed that we sow, that which we, we put into ourselves, that's what we're going to get out. It is like the old, it's like the old uh, computer saying, garbage in, garbage out. You put garbage, you, if, you, if you in the computer put bad things and viruses into a computer, don't expect that computer to do anything. It's going to be, it's going to be a mess because of what was put into it. If you want to enjoy a good quality of Christian life and enjoy the blessing at the end of the chapter, well, this is an, a recipe that God gives us to reach that goal. Learn to give thanks. Sing songs that praise God's name. Get into the habit of looking for God's loving kindness every morning and reflecting on God's faithfulness every night. Listen to calm, God-uplifting music. Go to verse 4. This is a tough one. This is a tough one. For thou, Lord, hast made me glad through thy work. I will triumph in the works of thy hands. Thou, Lord, hast made me glad through thy work. I will triumph in the work of thy hands. Here's, here's one that's tough. Be glad when it hurts you as God works in you. Is anybody here? Has God finished working on you and you have reached impeccable, sinless perfection? I don't think so. I believe if you ever get to that point, you're, 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 you're in heaven already <laughs> because you've now received your glorified body. But if you're down here on earth and you're still breathing and you have this body that's the child of Adam, uh, you still have sin. We all have sin in us. Be glad, though, when it hurts you as God is working in you. I love that verse in Jeremiah 18 where God sent him down to the potter's house. He beheld, he wrought a work. The, the potter wrought a work on the wheels. And the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter, so he made it again another vessel. Aren't you glad that, that, that when our, our life is marred, that our potter will take us up again and he will remold us and he will, he will soften us back up. He will do what he's got, what he's got to do. He will pull out all the stuff that, that is, that is a foreign and it shouldn't be there and, and, and make us again into a vessel that seems good to the potter. I love that verse in Jer John 15, verse 2. It says, Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it. He purges it. He prunes it. The branch that bears fruit in him, he prunes it. Why? So it doesn't get too big for its bridges? No. So it will bring forth more fruit. So it will bring forth more fruit. So we ought to be glad when it hurts us as God is working in us. You see, God has got levels of spiritual growth that our minds, maybe we haven't even contemplated it yet. We haven't, even, we haven't even gone there mentally. But God, he's saying, I want to work in you because I want to take you to a whole other level because I want to do a greater work through you. Hallelujah. Wouldn't you love that? I would love for God to, to, to do that in my life and to do that in our lives. But we have to be glad when it hurts us as God works in us. Go to, again, verse 4 says, For thou, Lord, hast made me glad through thy work. Why? Well, I'd be glad. Look at the last part of the verse. It says, I will triumph in the works of thy hands. When God is working in me, he is gearing me up for triumph, for victory. Don't you want to win? Don't you want to win in the Christian life? 
Don't you want to be useful? You see, God has the ability to remove from you that sinful desire and give you the victory over that sin that weighs you down with guilt and ineffectiveness. I saw a report this week about this car company in China that specializes in making electric cars. And somebody came upon a field of electric cars. Thousands and thousands of cars in this field. They would open the car and they would look at the mileage. Some only had 31 miles on it. Totally wasted. They, they, they were, they, these were government cars that they were just putting in this field so that the, this company could get government subsidies. If, if these cars could talk, what do you think they would be saying? What, what, what do you think they would be saying? Uh, with, I want to be useful. I don't want to just be sitting here in a field and rotting and, and, and just going back to, to the dust from which I came. I want to be used in our Christian life. That's what we ought to desire as well. I want to be used. You know, if, if uh, 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 Brother, Brother England, he works with the, the uh, vehicles here, and if he grabs a wrench and he's, he's putting that wrench to use, and he's using that wrench, if that wrench could talk, Ow, ooh, ow, that's too tough. Ow, oh, ah, you're stretching me. Oh, you're going to... You. Right? If that, if that wrench could, could, could speak, what, how, how would it say? But it's being used. That's what it was created for. Well, what about us? What about us? He says, Thou, Lord, hast made me glad through thy work. Lord, please work through me. But in working through us, that may mean I need to be put in a place of discomfort. I may be, be uncomfortable, but I ought to be glad because God is actually using me. I have not been set aside. I have not been put on the shelf. I'm being used by God. Learn to give thanks in everything. Sing songs that praise God's name. Get into the habit of looking for God's loving kindness and His faithfulness. Listen to God uplifting music. Be glad when it hurts as God works in you. Go to verse 5. It says, O Lord, how great are thy works. And thy thoughts are very deep. God wants to work in you in ways that you can't imagine. In ways that I can't even imagine. What does Isaiah 55 say? It says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. His, his thoughts are for us, are very deep. And he's got great plans. That is why he works very slowly and patiently with you and I so that we will learn to give thanks, so that we will learn to sing songs to praise his name, so that we will get in the habit of looking at for his faithfulness and his loving kindness, so that we will, we will be, let, him, let him work in us and be glad when he's stretching us and taking us to another level. Verse 6, it says, a brutish man knoweth not, neither doth a fool understand this. That word brute, brutish, means like a brute or beast. Insensible, stupid, unfeeling, savage, ferocious, brutal, gross, carnal, ignorant, uncivilized, untaught. A brutish man doesn't get this, though. The brutish and the foolish man, they will be clueless to the ways of God working in their life. They will look at it and only judge it by the surface instead of stepping back and wondering, God, are you trying to do something? Are you trying to work here? No, it's all about how they feel. Oh, I don't feel good at the moment. I'm going to run this way. Everything is based on feelings. They, may, they might have a long, long lifespan, but they have no quality of Christian life. No quality of Christian life. You know, I've, 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 met, I've met Christians, I've met senior saints who have been saved longer than I've been alive. And they're some of the most bitter people that I've ever met. And it, it blows my mind. My, my parents, by the grace of God, they raised me in church and they kept me from the things that, that would hurt me spiritually. And they raised me in the things of God. And by the grace of God, I, I'm here where I am. And, and I praise the Lord that, that he has allowed me to, to have this wonderful life. How 
Why aren't you happy too? I, I, I don't get it. I don't get it. A brutish man knoweth not, neither doth a fool understand this. Verse 7, it says, When the wicked spring as the grass, and when all worker, all the workers of iniquity do flourish, it is that they shall be destroyed forever. Verse 7, when you reach this point of Christian growth, you begin to understand why God gives the wicked man more leash. Think about why would God allow the wicked to spring as the grass? Why? Doesn't he hate what they're doing? Doesn't he, doesn't he, doesn't he uh, hate their sin? Yes, he does. But also, God doesn't like to destroy the wicked. Because he knows that they are just a passing wind. And that if he were to extinguish their life and the breath that they have, they would be gone forever. He would never be able to bring them back. It is appointed unto man once to die, and after this the judgment. But when the wicked spring as the grass, when all the workers of iniquity flourish, it's because God is trying to be good to them because he knows that they will be destroyed forever. You will also love what he is doing in you and you will not desire to go back to that old life. You may say, hey, I've, I've separated myself from some things I used to do as a, as a wicked person or as a, as a worker of iniquity or as an unsaved person. And, and, and God is working in your life and you're blossoming and you see other people. They're, they're, they're also they're, they're being blessed in this world, but yet they're not saved. Don't fret over it. What does is, what is Psalm say? Fret not because of evildoers. God is giving them some leash. God is giving them a chance. You see, their flourishing is short-lived. Their riches is short-lived. Their springing as the grass is short-lived. But as the grass, what happens every so often is cut off, thrown into the fire, and burned, extinguished forever. Verse 8, it says, But thou, Lord, art most high forevermore. When you reach this point of your Christian life cycle, you know that no one can outdo God. It doesn't matter how the world does and the, 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 the cheating that they uh, uh, employ, the, the, the thievery that they employ, the, the bad principles that they employ, and how they're, they're getting ahead or seemingly get ahead. It doesn't matter. God's going to win in the end. God's going to win in the end. Thou, Lord, art most high forevermore. You, know, you realize when you get to this point of your Christian life and, and your understanding that no one can outdo God. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if this person has many riches. God is going to get them in the end. God is going to judge them in the end. When you can understand that and not fret over those things and not, not let that uh, uh, affect how you live and you maintain your principles and you live by the principles of the Word of God, you're getting close to major victories in your life. You start to understand how God works in your life and you stop fighting it. When Jesus, our Savior, can get to the point of becoming your Lord you're taking a giant leap upward in your Christian life. Your Lord, that word Lord means your authority. Your boss, the one who runs your life. Doesn't Jesus automatically become your Lord at salvation? He does by right. Yes, he has the right to be your Lord. But not necessarily by application. You have to crown him Lord. You have to kneel to his authority. But thou, Lord, art most high forevermore. Verse 9, it says, For lo, thine enemies, O Lord, for lo, thine enemies shall perish. All the workers of iniquity shall be scattered. When Jesus truly becomes your Lord, you're able to leave battles in the Lord's hand. Well, you're able to leave battles in the Lord's hand. You're able to rest in him knowing that he is in control of everything. It doesn't matter how bad it looks. I am not going to judge things by their appearance. I'm going to put it in the Lord's hands, and I'm going to put myself in his hands, and he's just going to guide and direct everything. So, 
Learn to give thanks in everything. Learn to sing songs that praise God's name. Habitually look for his loving kindness and faithfulness. Listen to calm up God uplifting music. Be glad when it hurts you as God works in you. Realize that God wants to work in you in ways that you can't even imagine. Also understand that the brutish and foolish man, they will be clueless to the ways of God's working in their person, in, in their life. And now you're beginning to understand why God gives the wicked more leash, because they'll be lost forever. The goodness of God leadeth to the repentance, doesn't Paul say in the New Testament? The goodness of God leadeth to repentance. And that's what he's trying to get these wicked to understand. I'm trying to be good to you to win you back. But once they're gone, they're lost forever. Then you become convinced that no one can outdo God. And you're able to leave the battles in the Lord's hands. You, be, you, you become more spirit-filled. And when you're more spirit-filled, you're more filled with his peace. Knowing he's in control. And he's gonna, he's, anything he puts his heart and mind to do and his hand to do, it always turns out better. Go to verse 10. Psalm 92, verse 10, it says, But my horn shall thou exalt like the horn of a unicorn. I shall be anointed with fresh oil. You realize and you hunger for the anointing of the Holy Spirit with his fresh oil. I love that scripture in Psalms 133. Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. It is like the precious ointment upon the head that ran down upon the beard, even Aaron's beard that went down to the skirts of his garment. And God wants to anoint us with fresh oil. But how do we get there? We get there by learning to give thanks. In everything, give thanks. By singing praises to his name. By looking for his loving kindness and faithfulness. By ministering to our hearts through the music that we listen to. By letting God work in us. And letting him stretch us beyond what we would normally feel that we were, are capable of doing. Let him work in us and stretch us. Realize that God is working in a way, working in us in ways that we can't even imagine. Understand that the, the brutish man and the foolish man, they resist this. And, 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 and God is trying to work in their life, but they're resisting this. Don't be like that. Understand and be convinced that no one can outdo God. They may be violating Bible principle and seemingly get ahead, but God is going to win out in the end. Go to verse 11. It says, mine eye also shall see my desire upon mine enemies, and mine ears shall hear my desire of the wicked that rise up against me. Not only do you hunger for the anointing of the fresh oil of the Holy Spirit, but you also fully trust God to take care of your enemies in his time and in his way. Sadly, many times our sinful heart, we want God to cut our enemies off where God wants them to repent and get right. And in our minds, we never think of them getting we, 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 we know that they will never repent. That's what we say in our minds. Oh, they will never. I, 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 they, they, they did that three times. Three times, and after three times, there's, there's three strikes and you're out. Doesn't God know that? <laughs> Doesn't he listen to American baseball? No. God doesn't work in our, in our thinking patterns. But when you get to that point in your Christian life where you can trust God, you can put it in God's hands, you'll understand that God will take care of those supposed enemies in his time, in his way, and you're not stressed about it. Go to verse 12. It says, The righteous shall flourish like the palm tree. He shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. You will see your Christian life flourishing and being spiritually productive. Hallelujah. To live a long Christian life is not the goal. It's to have good quality of life. Amen? To have good quality of life. I am so glad that when God, when he said to Adam and Eve, 
that you're cursed and you're going to be working by the, by the sweat of your brow and you're going to have pain. I'm glad he said, you know what? I'm not going to invent all these technology things to help you do the work of the field. I'm going to let you do it by the sweat of your brow. I'm going to let you do it by hand. Why? Because it helped them to pass the time. They lived 900 years. I wonder if they ever figured out how to, to develop a tractor in 900 years. If Adam at the end of his life ever had a, had a tractor. I, I don't know. History doesn't say. The Bible doesn't say. But I don't know. The righteous shall flourish like the palm tree. He shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. You will see your Christian life flourishing and being spiritually productive. Verse 13. Those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. You understand the relationship between your position on earth and your productiveness in heaven. Notice the two places. There's the planted in the house of the Lord and there's flourishing in the courts of our God. And you begin to see the connection between your place in God's house here on earth and your favor with God in his courts. Now, let me ask you a question. What happens in a court? The judge hears, does he not? What does he hear? He hears cases. Go to Isaiah chapter 58. Hold your place there in Psalm chapter 92. Go to Isaiah chapter 58. It's very important that we understand to give thanks and sing praises and look for God's loving kindness and to have that, that work of God happening in our heart, to not be like the brutish or the foolish person, to understand that God's working with us because he wants us to flourish in the courts of God. How can we flourish in the courts? What happens in the courts? Cases are heard. Let's go to Saul, uh, Isaiah chapter 58. Go to verse 3. It says, Wherefore have we fasted, say they, and thou seest not? Wherefore have we afflicted our soul, and thou takest no knowledge? Behold, in the day of your fast, you find pleasure and exact all your labors. Behold, you fast for strife and debate, and to smite with the fist of wickedness. This is Isaiah talking to the people and saying that you're, you're, you're fasting for the wrong reasons. You're, you're, you're not understanding the purpose behind it. He's saying, you, you, in the day of your fast, you're finding pleasure. The, the whole purpose of fasting was to afflict your soul. What was, was to, 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 to not have pleasure in that day, but was for affliction. It was, it was for another purpose. He says in verse, in verse 4, you fast for strife and debate. You fast so that you can strive with the other person and say, hey, I fasted longer than you, and I'm better than you. It's for pride's sake. And he was identifying this in the people of Israel. You're not fasting for the right reasons. I mean, Isaiah says, I'm going to tell you the reason for, for, the, for your fasting. Keep reading. It says, and to smite with a fist of wickedness, ye shall not fast as you do this day, to make your voice to be heard on high. That's why you fast and pray. Those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. When you have, when you understand the connection between God's house here on earth and his, his court in heaven, you understand, hey, there are cases to be heard. There are matters to be heard. I want to flourish in his courts. How are we doing? In the court of God up in heaven, how are we doing? Are we flourishing? Are we getting spiritual prayer victories in the court of God? When you understand that, when you understand that those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God, when you understand the relationship between your position on earth and your productiveness in the heavens, your productiveness in God's courtroom, your quality of Christian life takes a, goes to a whole other level. Because, because the things that are coming across you, you're able to see deeper into it and realize, hey, when I get alone with God, I need to pray in this way. I need to do this work and this work and this work. And you are doing this work and your, your quality of Christian life is becoming so much deeper. You're growing in favor before the judge of judges. That's for those who are planted in the house of the Lord. They, are, they flourish in the courts. 
of God. And in verse 14, look what it says. They shall still bring forth fruit in old age. Did you hear that? They shall still bring forth fruit in old age. We have many senior saints that 20, 30, 40 years ago, they were more active. They could, they could walk the bus routes. They could ride the buses. They could drive the buses. They could work on the buses, but now their bodies just won't allow it. So are they washed up? We set them on the shelf? No, God says, no, I want you to be productive in your old age. He says, they shall still bring forth fruit in old age. You can still have use. You can still be useful even in old age. Why? Because you can flourish in the courts of God. If you understand the connection. Once you catch on. It becomes so exciting to see God working in you and through you that you won't want to get off of the carousel. You know those kids that go to the zoo and they have the, the carousel with the ponies and all the kinds of animals, the zoo animals. Do it again, Daddy. Do it again. That was Dalton just a few years ago. Do it again, Daddy. Do it again. He's going to be gone come, come uh, fall time. Uh, and I, I've, I've, I've got to get this in. I've got to tease him. You just, he just, they just want to go again and again and again and again. I'm glad we had this, the, the, the year membership because it didn't matter. Let's just go again. I've already paid for it. But in the Christian life, you'll realize I want to utilize all of my time to flourish more and more in the courts of God. I understand that. I understand that all of this all of, all of this psalm, all of these steps that I've been practicing in my life have, have brought me to this point to where now I'm flourishing and I know how to address and I know how to speak to God on matters that are happening here and I'm watching God move His hand because I asked Him to. Have you ever had a situation where you had to have God's hand move and you labored in prayer with God and it happened. If you've never experienced that, you, 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 you need to go do business with the Lord and say, Lord, I want to experience that. I want to experience that. Because it is a joy when you realize God, God wants to do that. He wants to be moving in your life. He wants you to, to move His hand. They shall still bring forth fruit in old age. They shall be fat and flourishing. In your old age, you will still be bringing forth fruit. You won't feel like, I've got no purpose. No, you'll realize, I've got even a greater purpose. In your old age, you will be fat and flourishing. But what is the purpose of all these things? Is it for my ease? Is it for my status? No. No. Go to verse 15. It says, To show that the Lord is upright, He is my rock, and there is no unrighteousness in Him. There's a threefold purpose in this entire life cycle. In this entire quality of Christian life. It's number one, to show the world that the Lord is upright. That He is good. He is a great and loving God to serve. The world, they look at our elders the elderly in our society, and they say, you have no use. God says, that's when you have the greatest use. We should be building and growing to that point so that when, when we physically aren't able to get out there and maybe produce as the youth would, we can be flourishing in the courts of God because we've been growing to that point. God wants to show the world that he's upright, that he's good, that he's great, that he's a loving God to serve. And it doesn't matter if you're the smallest child or if you're the, 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 the saint of the saints, uh, of the senior saints in, in the church or, or even in the world. God has a purpose for you. God has something for you to do. Secondly, he says, I want to show the world who you can really depend on. It says to show that the Lord is upright. He is my rock. To show the world who can you, you can really depend on. He's my rock. 
the youth of today need to hear how dependable our God is at all times. Who better to tell them than the grandparents and the great-grandparents? To tell how the Lord's been faithful. He's been a rock. That's what the youth need to hear. And number three, to show the world that there is no unrighteousness in God. There is no unrighteousness in God. You've got the longest track record of, of witnessing and being able to look back through the, through the decades that you've been alive and you can, you can tell the younger generation, you know what, I've, I've, been, I've been in the Christian circles for 70, 80, 90 years and there is no unrighteousness in God. I've never witnessed it in my whole life. Hallelujah. God does all things good. Amen. He does all things good. And when you let him work in your life, it will always turn out better than you ever could imagine. So learn to give thanks. Learn to sing so songs that praise God's name. Habitually look for God's loving kindness and faithfulness. Listen to music that would uplift God, that would, that would stir up the gift that is in you. Be glad when God hurts you as he works in you, as he's stretching you. Be glad. Realize that God wants to work in you in ways that you can't even imagine. Don't be like the brutish and foolish man who are so, so blinded to what's going on that they don't see God working. When you begin to understand that God is growing you, he's trying to, to get you to a point of, of greater growth, you begin to understand why God gives the wicked more leash. And you're not worried about them supposedly flourishing. They're springing as the grass because it's short-lived. And you become, you become convinced that no one can outdo God. You, you're able to put the battles in the Lord's hands. You realize and you hunger for the anointing of the Holy Spirit. You want a closer relationship with Him. You fully trust God to take care of your enemies in His time. And your life is flourishing and spiritually productive. You understand the relationship between your position on earth and your productiveness in heaven. You catch on and it becomes exciting, so exciting that you don't want to get off the, the, the ride. You want to go again and you stay on that ride until the day you die. And the world is able to see through your life that the Lord is upright, that he can be depended on. There's no unrighteousness in him. This is the quality of Christian life that God wants for each one of us. The only question is, will you get on the ride of your life? Will you stay on? God has a purpose for each one of us, even, even at the age we are, even at the stage of life where we are. God has a purpose for us. The question is, is, are we going to stay on or are we going to quit on God? Heavenly Father, I thank you and praise you, Lord, for your word. Thank you so much for wanting to use us, for wanting us to flourish, for wanting us to to be productive spiritually all throughout our life. Heavenly Father, sometimes I, I wonder why you don't use angels to come and down and just do your work and get it all done. Why do you limit yourself to sinful man? You don't have to. But Heavenly Father, I thank you that you do. I thank you that you allow us to be used. It's an honor. It's a privilege. It's a joy. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord, to, to, to hunger and thirst for a better quality of Christian life. And to take these steps and to apply these steps and to yearn to be producing fruit and to be a productive Christian and to be flourishing in the courts of God. Not necessarily flourishing here on earth. The, the, the foolish men, they may flourish here, but our heart's desire should be to flourish in your courts before you. Have our prayers heard on high. Have your hand moving in our life in a powerful way. Please help us, Lord. Please help us, Lord. Give us a purpose. Give us direction. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's all stand, please. We have Miss Melissa play hymn of invitation. The altar's open. The Lord's dealing on your heart. Maybe you're going through some discouragement. Maybe you're 
you're wondering, has God got anything for me? God wants us to flourish in, the, in his courts until the day we die. He's got plans for us. He's got needs. He wants to use us. May we pray to that end. May we yearn for that end. That God would always use us, no matter where we are in life. Let's pray. Sure, Blue Song Book. We're going to go to number 400, and we'll sing the first and last verse of I Wish I Had Given Him More, number 400, as our closing hymn. Number 400. By and by, when I look on his face, Beautiful face, thorn shadowed face. By and by, when I look on his face, I wish I had given him more, more, so much more, more my life than I e'er gave before. By and by, when I look on his face, I'll wish I had given him more. In the light of that heavenly place, Light from his face, beautiful face, in the light of that heavenly place, I wish I had given him more, more, so much more. Treasures unbound and for him I adore. By and by, when I look on his face, 
I'll wish I had given him more. Amen. <clears throat> I'm so glad that God wants to use us the entire time that we're here on, here on earth. Amen. Amen. Well, let's close in prayer and then we'll be seated and we'll have our Lord's Supper time uh, to follow. So as we're praying, men, if you could take your places. Heavenly Father, I thank you and praise you, Lord, for this time that you've given us to come together. Thank you so much for the truths from your word. I pray that you'd please encourage our hearts. Help each one of us to know that you have a purpose for us. You have a plan for us. You want to use us. More than anything, we need your help. I pray, Lord, that you please help us to carry this message with us through the week. And help us, Lord, to live it out. Help us, Lord, to practice all these other little things, being thankful, seeing the bigger picture, not fretting when the evil are being blessed, but understanding that you're being merciful to them and learning how to flourish in the courts of God. I pray, Lord, you please help us, Lord, to be what you want us to be here in this area. Lord, you have us here. You planted us here. Many of us had no choice in us being born and raised in this area. And so we thank you. We thank you for putting us here and desiring to use us. So please help us to be useful. Help us to remember these things this week, Lord. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. At this time, we're going to observe the Lord's Supper.